UMBC Retrievers were crowned champions, totaling a record. UMBC, the 2019 American East Conference champions. The first ever number 16 seed to defeat a number one seed in an NCAA match. Kasai with the chip, and look at Halk with the run, and he just gets a foot on it. So long, it's incredible that the retrievers have been able to even. Welcome into the UMBC Retriever Report. It's our lacrosse preview show, and expectations are high for both the men's and women's lacrosse teams here at UMBC coming into the 2020 season. Uh, the men picked second in the conference in the preseason polls, the women picked fourth. Both teams in the top tier of the conference. Ladies first, let's start with the ladies. Joining me is head coach Amy Slade and also uh, Lily Kennedy from the UMBC women's lacrosse team. Ladies, welcome in and let's talk about last season first because trip to the America East tournament, uh, five straight games in the season where you scored 10 plus goals, a four and one stretch there. So you're going to look to carry that momentum over into 2020. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really great that we have a core group of returners that understand what we're doing. We're also filling a lot of um, spots, losing Lauren McDonald, one of our leading goal scorers, and um, unfortunately she got hurt in the middle of the season, so missing that. Um, and Grayson Corbett, who basically ran our attack behind there with Lily Kennedy. So we've really had a great opportunity to fill some of those spots with really lively, um, athletic, um, excited freshmen, along with Lily being able to like take the lead back there and kind of getting everyone's like feet wet. Um, you know, she's been back there for now three years, so she kind of knows the reins. And um, we're really looking forward to like getting some good energy in there. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed about your team. You just touched on a young team, mm -hmm. one senior I think on your entire roster for 2020. So I mean, it's a it's a teaching experience, right? For sure. And you know, I think the best the best part about that is that they're all willing to learn, um, and they they all come after. They stay early, stay late, come early, um, and they're wanting to put in the work. And that's all you can ask for. Lily, welcome in. Talk to me about the differences between um, your freshman season and your sophomore year, kind of how that you progressed as a player through those two seasons. Yeah, absolutely. So freshman year, I think it's hard for anyone to evolve to the Division One game. Um, but Amy is such a great coach. And as a team, she helps mold us together um, to be the best that we can be. So going into sophomore season, I had a lot more experience, um, a lot more confidence on and off the field with what I needed to do um, to help our team perform at the highest level. What do you like most about playing for Coach? <sighs> she just wants us to be um, amazing human beings as well as amazing lacrosse players. So we're supported on the field, but off the field, academically. Um, and I know I can go to her if I need anything, which is something that not a lot, lot of other teams have. Let's talk about your team. Let's start with the attack. Of course, Lily, and you guys, you're going to really lean on them to, to obviously to score goals, but to be offensive and get production this year from your, your leaders. Yeah, for sure. So um, two returners right now are Livy, uh, Livy Docal and Lily um, that really kind of rounded out like a lot of our scoring. So we're adding a lot of freshmen to that mix. Um, so we're going to look to them to really lead the way. Um, and then obviously Zoe returning in the midfield and we'll have some other fr uh, fresh blood in the midfield as well. Um, and I would say like our de defense is a little bit more seasoned. You know, they've been there for a little bit longer. So we really are going to look for the attack in the midfield to really push the ball and you know fast break is our thing so we really want to be able to push the ball put some quick goals in um, and you know let defense do the least amount of work as possible. Goalkeeper Lexi Roberts talk about her and did I see she started at Army right? Yep so we have Lexi and Sophie um, really both of them are, are awesome they're both lefties subsequently so that's <laughs> a little bit um, unusual but I think they're both really great at different things so we're really going to look to use them both in different capacities. Billy, talk to me about life off the field here at UMBC. What, what stands out most for you? What do you like most about um, what you've been doing here at UMBC? One thing I love about being a Division I athlete is the routine. So I'm a huge routine person. Um, we have a booked schedule, whether that's our lifts, our runs, our practices, and then you have to fit into that, your study hall hours, your schoolwork. Um, and also time just to relax and you know have fun with your friends. So yeah, that routine is really what makes I think a D1 athlete like stand out and develop these skills um, that we need later on in life. 
Have you made a hard decision about now coming into your junior season? Have you made a hard decision about life after and what you're going to want to be doing? Yeah. So actually, I am doing the pre-occupational therapy program here at UMBC, um, and I will apply for Towson's OT program in the fall. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I, from my experience, I can tell you that's a that's a big important thing for people. Um, you know, I'm an amputee, so having that yeah. ability to work with occupational and, and physical therapists was huge in me getting back yeah. to where I needed to get to. So that's, that's huge. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Amy, eighth season, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know time flies, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I came in, I was like, Amy, like third or fourth, no, this is her eighth season. It's yeah. like, so talk to me about building the culture. And it seems as though you've really done a nice job of getting exactly what you want and not just on the field, but off the field as well, getting the girls in here to make them productive members of society, right? For sure. I mean, I think that's our number one goal. And, you know, we really, we, we stress our core values, which is gratitude, respect, integrity, and passion. And that's kind of how we govern ourselves on the field and off the field in the classroom while we're interacting with the community. And that's really important to us because, um, you know, one of the biggest things that I, I really believe in is no one really remembers the wins and the losses or that one game, remember that one time, right. but they're going to remember who you are when they meet you and they shake your hand and how you made them feel. And so that's really what I want these girls to, to leave with is a sense of, um, you know, confidence in their self, what they're doing. So when they, you know, leave UMBC, they're able to go out and I say rule the world as they may, which I know Lily definitely will do. Um, but then also be able to just be good people. Um, you know, lacrosse is our vehicle to get you there. And we all, that is our common, you know, thing that we all have is we all have a passion for lacrosse and how we do that and how we facilitate um, greatness and good people throughout this whole process. And um, it's taken a little while to kind of get the right people in the right places and being surrounded by really good um, outside sources. But I think we're really finding our, our, our mojo right now. Sure. Um, and so I think we have a great class coming in, you know, two great classes that are, you know, we just finished recruiting our 2021 class and have great kids coming in with great kids currently here. And um, they buy into what UMBC is all about and what UMBC and lacrosse is all about. And um, I think that's why we're moving in the right direction. All right. So part of that and part of the thing I love about athletics is you get a chance to give the girls life experiences and while you're playing. You know, you went to California last year, uh, the home and home with UC Davis, right? No, so, UC Davis is coming to us Oh, they're again. coming to this yeah. piece, but you went there last year, right? No, they come to us. Oh, they come to you. Yeah. So talk about just building the experiences for the girls when you're out on the road and things like that. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really great to get them out. I think that's where the team bonding happens, you know, on the bus when we play, like, silly games like Name That Dog or when, you know, we, um, you know, someone uses the bathroom and they should it. You know, it's <laughs> things like that that make you, like, bond as a team. Um, and so that's when, or when you get to a hotel room and every room is, like, single rooms and you're getting really close to your roommate that, that, uh, that trip. But those are the times that we really um, show bonding, and that's, you know, part of what we do here. All right, let's talk about the schedule. You open up against Lehigh. Um, you've got a good home schedule, VCU, Bucknell. Um, but you also go at Temple, at Drexel, and then Hopkins again. You play some tough games. It yep. really gets you ready for your conference schedule, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, our conference is obviously always really tough, and we're always in you know the top um, portion of lacrosse in the top 20. So I think you know for us being able to play teams that emulate that America East schedule is really important to us. So really being able to battle against those teams earlier is going to help us in the long run. And then you get a – Right off the bat uh, of conference play at Stony Brook, you find out where you where you stand, right? Right off the bat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's always a battle. Um, you know, Long Island, Baltimore, it's – it's that who's better at lacrosse, who's who owns yeah. the crown yes, kind of thing. Yes, yes. Um, so those games are, you know, sometimes maybe the score isn't always indicative like the, of the energy that goes into it, but um, for sure we go in and we battle. Awesome. Amy, appreciate the time. Good luck this year in 2020. Lily, it was nice to meet you, and good luck with uh, the season this year and, uh, and your career. Thank you so much. You got it. Appreciate uh, it. UMBC Women's Lacrosse here. We come back from the break. We'll be joined with, by the men, Ryan Moran and Jason Brewster join us here to talk men's lacrosse in 2020. Back with the Dream Report after this. My anxiety kind of like spiked through the roof and I started having like depressive symptoms and it got to the point where I couldn't fo like couldn't function anymore. We've been really privileged to have some courageous student athletes but also invested administrators and coaches. It's okay to, to be sad. It's okay, it's okay to have anxiety. You know, there's nothing more important than the health and safety of our student athletes. And I, I think the, the mental health initiative is one that we're going to continue to build on and you know, make a difference in all of our student athletes' lives across the league.
Welcome back to Retriever Report and our lacrosse preview show. In 2019, the men's lacrosse team started 1-6, had devastating losses to Vermont and UMass Lowell here at home, but then parlayed that into an amazing, magical run at the end of the season. They won four straight games on the road to get to where they needed to get to in the NCAA tournament. An NCAA tournament victory in elimination game and then eventually losing to Penn State at the end of the season. But a magical run in America East Championship as well. Joining us, Ryan Moran, head coach of UMBC Lacrosse, and Jason Brewster, close defender for their team. Guys, welcome in. Congratulations on an amazing season, um, Coach. Let's start with 2019. Uh, just everything just going against you, injuries, tough start, tough losses. What was it that you were able to turn that around and, and make that run? What was the difference? I just think the guys, um, you know, kind of held true to the culture of our program, to the blueprint of our program. Uh, and I thought, you know, during our practices, you know, you know, guys' morale was always high. And we knew with conference play coming up, we always had a, um, you know, a chance in the game. And, and fortunately, you know, we were able to improve uh, going on throughout the season. I think that's what every coach wants to see, getting better as the season goes on. Um, and we were able to do that. And as the season went on, that kind of resulted in victories. You know, some of those early season defeats, you look at them as losses, but we come and watch the film and be like, well, we got better in certain areas. It just didn't result in a in a win category, but it did result in an improvement. So we just held true to our blueprint, and uh, fortunately, you know, things started going our way towards the end of the year. The biggest losses came on the defensive side. Of course, Jason, a big part of that, you lose him uh, at the beginning of the season. Jason, how hard was it to rehab? Talk about your rehab and talk about getting back to where you can play here in 2020. Yeah, I mean, it was a tough experience. Um, that was my first year kind of sitting out, and I learned a lot, got a different point of view on the field, learned a lot from my teammates. Um, but this past year, I just kind of been rehabbing, getting myself back into it. Took the fall to get my feet under me. My mind's still there, but my feet kind of took a while. And I feel like I'm getting back, especially in the spring, feeling really good. Do you get the same sense, uh, people have talked about this, not just physically getting over the injury, but mentally, knowing that you're ready to accomplish what you need to accomplish, right? Yeah, and like, like I said, so the, the fall I kind of took most of my time getting my feet back under me, and at right. times I would be changing directions and thinking about my knee. So, I mean, coming into the spring, I just kind of got the mindset like I'm just going to do what I'm going to do and play as hard as I can and knock that mentality out of my mind. Coach, the thing I love most about what you guys have been talking about leading up to this season is not even thinking about last year and building on it and not resting on what you were able to accomplish, but taking the next step and just building on that coming into 2020. Yeah, you know, 2019 was great, uh, really magical run. I think that's why you get in, into coaching, to have moments and experiences like that, to see kids really invest, believe in each other, believe in the staff, and then have success as a byproduct of it. But, you know, we've kind of really taken a mindset of just not assuming anything. You know, let's not assume that we're going to be good. Let's not assume that we know what we're doing. Uh, let's buy into doing the things that got us some success, you know, and being, you know, uh, masters of the fundamentals, really investing in our film study, really investing in, in practicing hard on a day-to-day -day basis and looking to just steadily improve like we did last year. Flip side of losing and having injuries is, you know, being stronger on the back side of that. You know, Jason comes back, but now you have a lot of depth as well. You've got guys that have been there that have played, and you've got Jason returning as well. Talk about, so let's start with your close defense and, uh, and talk about how strong you feel with them and your, and your goalkeepers. Uh, yeah, it's great to have Jason back. It's also great to have Nick Griffin, who was out last year as well. Uh, it's great having those guys on the field. Uh, I, I think we have the best defensive coordinator in the country, too. So I know we have a lot of pieces down there that we're going to find ways to utilize in the best way to put us in positions to be successful all the time. Uh, and the added bonus, like you mentioned last year, was because of those injuries, guys that maybe we didn't think were going to get as much playing time as early in their careers did. And they, they took advantage of that, and they got real good experience. So now it's, it's, it's bred some healthy competition on that side of the field, which is always good. And you've got the problem that I know all, every coach loves, you got your two keepers that have played well for you, um, and then you've got the good problem trying to figure out who you're going to play, right, and yeah. who's going to be your starter. Well, they're both battling it out, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't include Christian Michaels in that conversation as well. He's a freshman who's been playing really well. Um, you know, Coach Bucci and Coach Chick have been doing a great job just developing those guys, making sure they're seeing enough shots every day, kind of watching film every day with themselves. So. You know, luckily for us, it, it's a good problem to have. We haven't really settled in on who's won that position just yet, but whoever does come out, um, we feel pretty confident that they're going to do a good job for us. Flip side of the field, uh, you have your entire starting attack back. you got to be real excited about what you guys are going to be able to do offensively. 
Uh, <laughs> I think it goes back to try not to assume, you know. I, I, I don't <laughs> want right, to assume right. they're just going to bust out 46 goals again. You know, we got to get back to what got us there and kind of hit that reset button pretty quickly and and do things the right way consistently every day and, and look to improve. And, you know, uh, couldn't be happier with the success that uh, Ryan Frawley, that uh, Brett McIntyre and Trevor Pachorki had. Um, and, and I think... You know, they're, they're just a great unit, super humble, super hardworking kids. So they're just uh, really easy to work with every day. So I'm very lucky. Um, there, I guess everybody chases the face-off guy. Uh, that's the big thing in college lacrosse, the, find the guy that's 65%. There are not many of them out there. No. Um, uh, what do you do this year, and, and what are you looking to do to try to at least be 50-50 on face-off? Well, I think um, through recruiting, I think through development within the strength and conditioning, we've really enhanced some of our athleticism in the middle of the field, and I think that you, that really helps at the face-off X. Uh, we have some good competition at, at, at the actual X, X itself. Uh, Coach Chick, who we brought on board, who just graduated from Lehigh, um, he's a professional player as well. I think he's doing a really good job just taking to that area of the field and giving us a good plan on every face-off. So I, I'm anticipating improved numbers there this year. Last couple of years, the rule changes, shot clock, everything else. Has that enhanced or has that kind of diminished the face-off X a little bit, in your opinion? Um, I, I think it's cre created just a little bit more of a consistent set of play throughout the game, um, like in terms of possessions coming, going back and forth. Um, but, I mean, there's no substitute for a great face-off guy. I mean, I think if you watch the Final Four, you know, a team like Penn State can go down 10-1, to 1, you know, and they were the best-scoring offense in the country by far. They're number one in every statistical category. But if you don't have the ball, it doesn't mean much. Make it take. It's always a great thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Winner. Um, Jason, talk about the defensive unit in general and, uh, you know, getting Nick back and, and the guys as a group. How confident do you guys feel coming into this season? Yeah, I mean, it's nice that we're all back. Um, I think the, the main focus this year has been kind of being together. Uh, last year we suffered a lot of injury, so our main focus is just kind of building off of what we what we had in 2018, which was uh, what I thought was our best year, and just progressing forward, I guess. Um, this will be your fourth year as a captain. Talk about that. Talk about understanding the role of being a leader, not just on the field, but off the field as well. Uh, I mean, each year I kind of come back and I look back and reflect, and I try to be a better captain or a better leader than I was each year. And me being a fifth year now, I feel like I have some pretty good experience and very conscious about what goes on. Um, so just using my experiences and, and kind of gaining, gaining the edge as I can as a leader. I want to talk to you about off the field for a second because, mm -hmm. you know, you had some cool experiences <laughs> off the field. You got to go to Hawaii mm -hmm. and you're, st you're as astronomy and studying um, uh, black holes in galaxies, right? Talk <laughs> about that for a second. Can you explain that to, to people, what, what exactly that is? Yeah, so um, going into my senior year, I got to spend a uh, summer in Oahu working at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. And I studied supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. They're better known as active galactic nuclei. Mm -hmm. um, most galaxies have them. And I was just kind of doing research, uh, doing research using space telescopes and kind of building analysis of them. Very cool experience. Coach. Come on. What, what? <laughs> well, I, I was a little upset you didn't ask me about some of this galactic stuff. Um, no, we're super proud of Jason, you know, and uh, the type of student that he is and the things that he's been able to do. I uh, just think he's a great representative of our program and what we're trying to have all of our athletes to be, you know, challenging themselves academically and then obviously athletically. What was it like living in Hawaii? Is that cool or not? Yeah, it was a very cool experience. Kind of okay. eye-opening. Um, being outside of the whole East Coast and the West sure. Coast because I'm from California. Um, just very different lifestyle, I guess, in that sense. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. No question. It's always great to get an idea of different cultures, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, definitely. Coach, back on the field, um, you look at this season in the conference. Man, you know, four teams, you guys, Stony Brook, Vermont, Albany, all right there. Um, you, you guys pick second, but it could, it could play out any way and really could come down to a play here, a play there, uh, a bounce here, a bounce there to determine who wins the conference. Absolutely. You know, I think from top to bottom, it's a pretty consistent camp uh, conference. And, you know, we're going to do our best to, to be as competitive as we can. Um, so, But I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that every team on any given Saturday, once we get into April, could beat the other. No doubt. Coach Moran, appreciate it. Jason, good luck for Thank this you. season and uh, for whatever you're doing in life as well. That's going to do it for our Retriever Report, our lacrosse preview show, the ladies and the men here in 2020. I'm Paul Mittermeyer saying so long.